I'm SP from the GuineaGeek.com show, a weekly geek news podcast that is part of the GuineaGeek.com network. Just like the show you're checking out now, shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other amazing geek shows at GuineaGeekNetwork.com. Welcome to episode 259 of Better Podcasting. On this show, we talk about when you might need to take a hiatus from podcasting. In this week's Better Podcasting Download, we talk about a big change to a product that we've regularly recommended before and why we can't anymore. And finally, in this week's Better Podback, we take some listener feedback, including some folks who might be experiencing a Mandela effect with podcasting gear. Lauren, start the show now because we have an announcement to make at the end of our featured topic. Welcome to Better Podcasting. With a combined history of over a thousand episodes and starting as early as 2008, we are hobby podcasters through and through, just like you. That's why we are different. We minimize the money talk so that you can focus on building a better podcast. Here are the hosts for the show, Stephen John Drew and Stargate Pioneer. Welcome to the 259th episode of Better Podcasting. I am Stephen, and with me, of course, is the wonderful, the fantastic, you wish that he would say goodnight to you every night, SP. <laughs> How's everybody doing? It's great to be back here in the studio. Got to tell you, I had a fantastic week on vacation at the Family Lake home. Was fantastic to be able to podcast. And you know what? I'm just going to roll into a quasi How I Say My Podcast story which was the podcast last week. I used the Zoom PodTrack P4, fell in love with it for the application. Is it as good as my studio? No, I still heard some room echo, some room reverb. But aside from that, it was everything I needed on the road, and I wish I would have had it seven to 10 years earlier. So that is my How I Saved My Podcast story, the PodTrack P4. What an amazing little device. You know, I have to say, uh, in listening back to the audio that was on there, I was really impressed with how clean it was. Because if you didn't check out that episode of the Better Podcasting live chat, SP did a bit of a live sort of debrief as he was using it to stream the Better Podcasting live chat. And when I got your files after and was listening, it was so clean. It was great. Uh, 100% can see why people would want to use it. It's portable. And when I was regularly traveling, I really wish I had had it. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit more about it in the next Better Podcasting live chat coming up. But it was really, uh, in my opinion, a lifesaver. And at the price point, it's just amazing. Every hobby podcaster should have one that does anything remotely like what we do. So that's how I save my podcast story. But Stephen, we have a great topic to cover today. So let's just get to it. We've been doing better podcasting since 2015, and if you include all the episodes between Better Podcasting, Better Co Podcasting Live Chat, it's pretty close to 300 episodes. Aside from the occasional missed week, we've really only had one scheduled annual break, and that's missing a week at the end of the year during the holiday season. In the past, we've talked a little bit about how there is a little conflict when it comes to release schedules in the podcast world between money-making podcasters, and hobby podcasters. Often you may hear the advice that podcasters need to release consistently and every week. Let me emphasize that, every week. In fact, although we always schedule our break during the holiday season, there are some people who believe that this is when podcasters could see an uptick because people are getting new devices and might explore listening to podcasts. So it's advantageous for you to get those new episodes out for people to listen to. However, for a hobbyist, you might find the priority you place on your podcast is different than somebody who is podcasting professionally. And that's where the conflict comes in. Although you probably want to maximize your podcast growth, the reality is, as a hobbyist, you probably have things higher on your priority list since this is in the very end of things, just something that you're doing for fun. It's your hobby. And if you're not doing your hobby podcast for fun, we'd suggest you pause now. Go ahead, pause. We'll wait 
and listen to our prior 258 episodes of Better Podcasting and our previous 39 episodes of Better Podcasting live chat. But additionally, we think there's also the entire question of the validity of that statement with modern consumer expectations. This is because this advice was created in a time before Seasons was a regular part of mainstream podcasting. Now, there are many professional podcasts out there that are created in Seasons, and many consumers are finding podcasting through mainstream podcasts. And as such, they might actually be used to the idea of podcasting as Seasons. That is, not every week, every week of the year, every year that you are podcasting. You can take a break. This is all to say that sometimes hobby podcasters may need to take a break for their podcast endeavors for an extended period of time. And that is okay if you want to do that, taking a break. Recently on Better Podcasting Live Chat, I spoke about how one of my co hosts has decided to take a few months off of podcasting, a sabbatical, and some of the benefits that comes with doing that. And today, we want to expand on this idea by covering some of the things that we think hobby podcasters should consider if they're thinking of taking a break from podcasting for a bit. Stephen, let's start with the, the reasons that you might consider taking a break with. Ultimately, this is an area that is going to be unique for each individually, and there's no way that we could possibly cover each and every scenario of why a hobby podcaster might need to take a break. But we do want to cover today some of the things that we think are top reasons that hobby podcasters might consider taking a break from podcasting. Now, before we get into this, we want to mention right off the top, this is part of the reason we want to go through this list. We're hoping that if we do this, you'll be sort of on the lookout for some of these warning signs. It's far too easy for hobby podcasters to get all wrapped up in the high pace of podcasting and you accidentally stop looking out for yourself. It's important to look out for these scenarios we're about to go through so that if you find yourself in a position where maybe a break would be beneficial for you, you recognize this rather than getting wrapped up in that high pace. And then you might take the action appropriate before it really becomes too late and you stop enjoying hobby podcasting forever. So let's begin with one of the first scenarios that we think many podcasters have experienced, and it's feeling exhausted. But more than that, it's the feeling of sustained exhaustion. The reason we want to specify that this might be a warning sign, sustained exhaustion, is because podcasting is a hobby that we have made very clear on here, we feel, takes a lot of time and commitment, and sometimes that might mean having more tiring days and exhausting days than others. Just like the uh, 1.30 a.m. night I just had last night as we record this to publish my latest episode of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's part of the gig with hobby <laughs> podcasting. Every once in a while, you just got to either delay a day or you got to go into the night and you just feel tired the next day. However, if you're constantly feeling tired or exhausted, that might be a different situation. If you're constantly feeling exhausted when you're doing something that should be fun, then the odds are eventually it's going to start to feel like work to you. And that's going to take away from that fun of podcasting. And while sometimes you might be able to push through this or power through it, other times it might build up so much so that you end up just hating hobby podcasting. If you're feeling exhausted with podcasting, start by taking a look at how much you're doing. If you're doing too many podcasts, might be time to cut one of those back. If you're podcasting too frequently, it might be time to slow down the release schedule. But if you're feeling like you kind of on paper have what should be a manageable amount of podcasting in your life, and you're still feeling exhausted, then this might be a warning sign or a signal that it's time for you to take a bit of a break from your hobby podcasting endeavors. And the next area we want to talk about is life events. Sometimes in life, things come up that demand a regular amount of your time for a certain period of time. Some examples of this include weddings, having a baby, leaving a job, starting a new job, graduations, retirements, selling a company, deaths, yeah, that takes a lot of time, or even a series of small events in a short period of time. Depending on the scope or frequency of these events, it might be a 
really hard thing to balance podcasting among all the happenings around podcasting. Now, in the past, we've talked about how you can do things like pre-record episodes or have people guest host the show while you're away. But there are some situations where these ideas just don't work. For example, let's say you're the main editor for the show. Is anyone else on your podcast prepared to take this on? I know I've explored this for Starling Tribune and Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. before, and my current co-hosts just don't want to do it. So I can't give that job to somebody else. Now, what if your topic is pretty personal? Will a guest host really fit in here or will it be more of a detriment to your podcast? I mean, if your podcast is around your particular experiences and your views on life, is that really going to work to have somebody else come in and take over your show? Probably not. Maybe sometimes it will. I don't know. You'd have to be the judge of that. Now, sometimes when life events happen, it's just plain best to plan to take a little bit of time away from your podcast. And then come back when you're better prepared, especially if there's a chance that giving the reins to somebody else might mean that you're still involved, such as with the editing example earlier. If the person you're passing the show to has never edited before, what's the chances they're going to try to reach out to you during this time? Probably pretty likely. They're going to ask questions, how you like to do things, what are the specific things on the music bumps that are in there, that sort of thing. Yes, that's happened before. I've used a virtual assistant before on Starling Tribune. And even at the end of Starling Tribune, after years of using the virtual assistant, it was still questions that came up and I had to answer them. So it's not just a fire and forget. It's that you as the producer of the podcast, you're going to have to answer those questions. So you're still going to have to be involved. And similar to life events is our next one. Life changes. It's important, though, that you recognize that life changes are very different than life events. With the previous point about life events, often you're kind of looking to make changes to your podcast endeavors for sort of a specific amount of time. Basically, you're looking to take a break to get through a certain period of time of things that are happening. But with life changes, they're often more long term. So you might be looking instead to take a break in order to reassess your current podcast endeavors and how the recent life changes fit in with your podcasting endeavors. For example, let's say that you change jobs, and now you have different work hours that impact when you used to record your podcast. You might have to take some time off of podcasting to figure out when's going to be an optimal time to shift recording to, especially if you have multiple people involved. Or maybe your kids are getting a little older now and they're taking a lot more of your time doing things like sporting events, birthday parties, or just general gaming that ends up basically amongst a whole bunch of fighting between the two because they just can't get along while they play Fortnite. All of these things might take a little bit more time of your life and you might not have as reliable of a schedule as you used to have for podcasting. As you podcast for a while, you might find that podcasting doesn't fit as well into your life as it once did. Perhaps at the time you started podcasting, it was a great fit, but maybe not so much now. Were you going through a hard time in life and it helped you through it originally when you started or on the reverse side, are you going through a hard time now and it is minimizing how you see podcasting in your life? Or perhaps podcasting has led you to something else that you feel more passionate about. For example, maybe you started by doing a storytelling podcast, but now you feel much more motivated to start writing novels. Or maybe you started by doing a podcast about the latest episode of Star Trek, but with so many ongoing series, you feel that doing a regular review show would be hard, and instead, you want to shorten it down to just doing some short YouTube videos. This is also appropriate with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Marvel television shows in general. I definitely feel this crux with our show. We've had to make some hard decisions with that show going on. Or perhaps you just question if your passion for podcasting is entirely gone. We did an episode last year about how podcasting isn't for everyone, and we stand by that. And we'll say it again. Podcasting is not for everyone. But sometimes people might be on the fence on whether or not it is for them. So if you take an extended break, it can help you realize which side of the fence you're on. 
You'll either take a break, be happier, or you'll take a break and be chomping at the bit to get back into podcasting. Either way, you're going to have your answer. And the last reason we want to mention that you might consider taking a break from podcasting is that you might want to reevaluate what you're podcasting on. Hey, SB, question for you. Quest. Do you remember what our topic was for episode one of Better Podcasting? The topic. Yeah, what was the topic? Yeah, the topic. Right. Exactly. Are you going to tell me what was the topic? I already did. Are you playing games? What was the topic of number one episode of Better Podcasting? Tell me. The topic was the topic. Oh, right. It was the topic. And the reason why we covered the topic as episode one, the premiere episode of Better Podcasting, is because it's important to have a central theme for your podcast. But here's the thing. After you've podcast on that thing for a while, you might not have as much fun with it as you once did. I'll fully admit right now, back when I did the Walking Dead podcast, I get really bored towards the end. It was not helpful at all that it was a really boring season, but just the fact of talking about this and trying to work my way through the same sort of boring story week after week after week got very old. It got very, very boring for me. And in the end, we hung up that podcast. And likewise, I'll fully admit that the latter seasons of Arrow, the television show, were rough to podcast on on Starling Tribune. The show ran for eight seasons and it created an internal universe called the Arrowverse on the CW network filled with more than a half a dozen other shows. I'm serious. It's a whole Arrowverse. It's a whole universe of itself. But Arrow, the television show itself, became less well-produced until the final two seasons when there was a showrunner change. It was repetitive after season two, and it was clear there were better superhero television shows to watch on television or streaming. Legends of Tomorrow, which is another show in the Arrowverse, and the impending crisis crossover as we march towards the end of Arrow, kept the show going, kept Starling Tribune going. But after it was all done, all three of us that were the remaining co-hosts on Starling Tribune knew it was time to turn out the lights on the podcast. And due to the subject matter, we could have kept on going because the Arrowverse is still there. The DC universe is still there in a lot of different forms out there that we could have podcasted on, but we chose not to. And in the end, eight years, and that's how long the show went. Eight years is a long time to podcast about any topic. And we realized that I just made a statement <laughs> from the guys that have Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. that's been going on for eight years, Gonna Geek that's been going on for nine years, and Better Podcasting, which has been going on for almost six years. So I realized that. but. <laughs> Eight years was a long time to podcast about Arrow. Also, sometimes you need to take a break to figure out just what your podcast passion is and if you want to continue talking about that topic. That is sometimes where a break can be helpful. If you try to figure this out while you're doing the topic, like the Arrow example that SP just mentioned, it might get all wrapped up in the routine, and you don't really realize what would be a better topic for you to cover. It's hard sometimes to get a good pulse on where your passion truly lies for podcasting when you're in the middle of a routine of talking week after week about a terrible season of The Walking Dead. So you take a break, step back, and sometimes you might find that this will help you realize where that new passion lays. And sometimes you might just find that you want to keep doing something with your co-hosts, but that also is playing a bit of an influence on choosing to step away from the topic. Like maybe you like your co-host so much that you want to keep doing that terrible Walking the Walking Dead podcast. And so once you step away for a little bit, you realize, okay, as much as I like these guys, I, I really don't like the Walking Dead podcast. <laughs> Yeah, it's especially difficult if you're doing multiple podcasts and you realize something has changed and now one of them needs to go. I mean, I've talked about it. The golden rule, uh, SP's, one of SP's golden rules of hobby podcasting, don't do more than two podcasts because you're just not going to have time for it. And this contributes to that excessive tiredness that we talked about before. So what are you going to do if you decide 
to take a break from podcasting. The first thing you should do is tell your audience about it. If you just go on hiatus, don't tell anybody about it. Most of your audience will likely not stay with you through the break. And we've talked about how podcasting can be a very personal relationship to a certain level because you're talking directly into somebody's ears. And if you take a break without announcing it, you might feel like a teenage kid stood up by their dates at the movie theater, abandoned. And since I was single in my 30s, I can tell you that kind of is the same way when you're older as well. Now, while the chances are that there will be some listeners who might not take the break very well, there may even be some that leave, basically. The bottom line is you're respecting your audience by looping them into your break. You're telling them that you're going to go on break and you're saying what's going on, just being honest and upfront about it with them. Now, you don't need to share with your audience all the reasons why, but if you're up for it, you certainly can. Some situations we realize might be easier to talk about. For example, if you're getting married, it might be something that you're super happy to talk about. But if you're wavering about your future in podcasting, you might feel like keeping that closer to home and not fully divulging everything about it. If it's up to you, basically, how much you want to disclose, but we would encourage you to make this decision knowing that no matter what you say, you'll probably have at least some portion of your audience not come back no matter what you say. They'll either leave because they found another podcast, they feel abandoned by you. There's tons of reasons. So they just won't come back. So you should be comfortable releasing what you release and not come from the perspective of trying to save all your listeners because it's just not going to happen. And once you release the information, you can't unrelease it. It is out there. People will know that you are no longer going to be podcasting for a certain amount of time. And it's just going to be out there. Now, ideally, when announcing your break from your podcast, you'll have a target return date. Now, this is a date your audience can expect to hear you back. This won't always be possible. And we would encourage you to make sure if you're going to leave a target date that you have a good chance of sticking with it because people are going to expect it. It's like a television show that ends in May and everybody's expecting it to come back in September or For the rare case, they say, okay, we're going to come back in the winter or early the next year, right? People are just going to expect that. If you don't see it, then they might not watch the television show when it comes back because they feel like they've been abandoned by the show or the network or whatever. It's happened. It's happened to me. I've done it before. It can be worse to string people along by giving them a hopeful return date when in reality, you're just not going to be able to make it. And depending on why you're taking a break, You might not know for sure what length you're in need. For example, having a baby can be a big life change for anyone. You might not know how having a baby is going to impact your life. You might need more time than you originally think. So if you're going to give a timeline, make sure that you give it long enough for the period of time that you might need. Of course, depending on the timeline, you might also need not to be too specific. You could give a general timeline and then direct people on how they can find the latest update, such on social media, Discord server, you know, your community or wherever. Or you could even let them know to keep an eye on your feed. You can always plan to drop an update episode along the way of where you think you're going to be coming back. Now, whatever you decide to do, it's just respectful to your listeners to give them a sense of when you might be coming back, even if you're not sure you will be coming back. It would be better to be honest and tell them uh, you're not sure what the future holds, but give a general idea of when it might happen if it does, meaning you coming back, rather than making them wonder if it would be weeks, months, or longer, years. At least if they know a ballpark of when they will receive the update, they won't be wondering in suspense the entire time. Now, close up the loose ends if you cancel a show. We're going to move on to that. And the last thing we want to mention in this section is that if you end up deciding to close down the show or cancel the show, try to come back and give your listeners an update. It's okay when you take time off if you decide that you're going to have to move on from a show. Sometimes that does happen, especially if you're taking time away from podcasting for some of these decision-based reasons. 
However, we'd recommend that you at least come back and do your listeners a favor and officially announce the end of the show and make sure it's in the time frame that you gave everybody. You know, if you're still considering it or whatever, you don't have to end the show at that timeline that you set. But you say you still have stuff going on and get back within a month, two months, three months, whatever it is, and then come back and then officially cancel the show or end the show. It's just a good way to end that relationship with your audience, which might follow you on to other projects, which might not be podcasting related. For example, one of the earlier things that we said is if you want to move on and do woodworking, then people might be interested in buying your woodworking. If you want to move on and become a progressive novelist and you have a Patreon, then those listeners would be like, hey, I want to give this guy some money or this gal some money, this person some money about their sequential updates. And uh, you end up, you know, creating a pretty good Patreon. So there's all sorts of reasons why to put that coda onto your podcast. So let's say that you've decided that you are going to take some time off of your podcasting endeavors. What are you going to do during this time? In our opinion, this is something that's going to drastically vary depending on each person's individual situation on why they're taking a break from podcasting. If you're looking to do it for a reason to accommodate some other happenings in your life, then we would advocate something that we've said to hobbyists for a while, which is focus on those areas of life. For example, if you're going to take some time off to ha handle family events, such as a wedding, then you probably should focus a lot on that wedding. These events often only come once, and it's important that you enjoy them while you can. We're big believers that your hobby can wait. But perhaps you're taking some time to just figure out some changes to your podcasting experience, such as the example where we mentioned that you need to revisit the topic of your podcast. Well, instead, you might want to take this time to dabble with these new ideas. Do some research on things that you do like and think you could podcast on and work out a bit of a roadmap on what it would look like transitioning to this new topic. Try out these topics, too, and see what works best. And consider all the things that you need to make a topic sustainable. But maybe there's more of a bigger life picture. Say, for example, you're trying to figure out how new life changes fit in with your podcasting. Perhaps you need to take some time to do other things and see how much time you can spend on podcasting once you're properly spending the time on those other life changes. But that's not to say you can't do some podcasting work. Perhaps you can chip away on your to-do list that you have for podcast production or related project development in a pretty fluid timeline. By taking a break from routinely creating episodes, you might find it easier to slide into looking into new music, working on new graphics, or experimenting with new ideas for your show. Depending on what the reason is for your break, though, this might need to be a pretty small list. For example, if the reasons you're taking a break from podcasting has to do with recharging yourself or evaluating specifics on your podcasting endeavors, you don't want to get yourself wrapped up in other areas of your podcasting where you don't afford yourself the freedom to accomplish these things. Perhaps you want to try out a new hobby and that's okay too. Sometimes people take up a sport only to realize it's not for them. That goes for podcasting too. While podcasting might have been a great hobby for you before, maybe you want to try something else out for fun. Maybe you start doing some woodworking and find that you enjoy that much more than podcasting, and that is okay. It's just a hobby. People's tastes change, and that can apply to your tastes and hobbies too. So maybe you need to try out a new hobby. And lastly, maybe you want to take some time to rework what your podcasts are going to look like. Perhaps it's changing a release schedule, the format, the length, the topic slightly changes, or maybe you gain a topic, et cetera, all those th sorts of things. Now, if you're feeling like you need to change things up, maybe you can slowly consider these things over the course of your hiatus. What can you change to keep yourself engaged in the hobby podcast process? Would you consider doing your podcast in seasons? Take in more breaks each year. Have a little bit more fun outside of podcasting. Recharge your batteries. This is especially important if you're taking a break because you feel you're not happy with your current podcasting endeavors. After all, if you don't spend any time on this, when you come back, you're 
probably going to find yourself in the same situation you were in before. You're going to feel burned out. You just want going to want to immediately take another break. It's like you, when you go on vacation, you have a great time, you come back to work and you go, Ugh, this really sucks. And instead of looking for a new job or getting into another aspect of your job to make it a little bit more appealing to you, you just take another vacation and then you run out of vacation time and the cycle repeats itself. So, yeah. Today, we've talked about some of the reasons you might consider taking a break for podcasting for a bit, some of the ways to handle things when it comes to your podcast and taking that break, and some of the things you can do while you're taking a break. In the end, not everyone will feel the need to take an extended break from podcasting during the life of their hobby podcasting endeavors, and some people who take a break will need to keep it shorter, and some may need to do it for a longer period of time. Some may need to take a break more often, and some may go longer stretches. That's the whole concept of every week versus seasons. Only you know when this might be something you need to consider. And if you don't take a break from podcasting, you might find that your podcasting endeavors come to an end sooner than you would have liked. Maybe just because you ignored those warning signs and you got burnt out. Recognizing when it's time and if you're podcasting with others is an important thing to consider because if you are feeling it might be time for a break, you're going to have to have that conversation with them. Of course, if you're in good standing with your co-host, they'll probably be very supportive of your needs. Which takes us to our final point of this conversation. Now, in the past, we've made various jokes surrounding topics like this before. However, this time, I assure you, we're not joking. We're having a serious conversation with you. The inspiration for today's topic comes because it's very close to us right now, because we're going to be following our own advice. Better Podcasting is going to be taking a bit of a break from releasing new episodes for both this and the Better Podcasting live chat podcast. This has been coming for a little while, and we've decided to finally pull the trigger on this needed hiatus. And before the rumors start, it has nothing to do with any personal relationship issues between the two of us. None at all. There's no turmoil, nothing. We've had fantastic conversations uh, throughout this entire aspect here. Now, if that was the case, if we did, we'd just take our own advice and flat out in the show. And uh, we do kind of look forward to hearing your fanfic on that. We've already gotten some uh, feedback that might lead to some... Uh, jokes or some skits and stuff like that. So we thank our listeners for that. Uh, we both have individual reasons, which we'll touch on briefly in a minute. But one of the things that is shared between us is that we need to change some things up a bit with the show. We want to keep it relevant for the current hobby podcasting environment and to keep the content sustainable. And if you think about it, aside from changing the release schedule, we've been doing better podcasting in pretty much the same format since December, or actually October of 2015. So it's pretty much six years now. So now to get on to some personal aspects of this, I have some big family events coming up. I had no secret to this all year long. We've been talking about it since January. This includes a daughter getting married. I have parents that need a little extra help now, unfortunately, through some accidents throughout the year. I have a car engine to finally rebuild or sell. It's getting out of my garage. And while we had originally planned to continue to release in some capacity here on Better Podcasting, when a couple of other variables come in, it just made sense to take a break right now, a short hiatus. And I will combine that with what Stephen is about to explain because the timing is just right. Yeah, and I'll be totally 100% transparent here. The bottom line is for me, uh, I, I genuinely don't know in what capacity podcasting is going to fit into my current life situations. I've been podcasting since 2008. And over this time, my life has changed quite a bit. I've gotten married. I have kids which are older now. And over the last few years, I've been finding it more and more difficult to find that balance with podcasting versus life from having to change formats on the Gunna Geek show to accommodate the soccer season with one of my kids to having to last minute beg SP to change recording dates for better podcasting due to family things that last minute came up, which I didn't have to beg. He was always very supportive. There's just been a lot of these sort of warning signs that I need to find the right balance in my life. And 
if you've ever invited me uh, to guest on your podcast, you probably might have heard me say no or take forever to respond or both of these things. Because the thing is, I like to podcast. I want to podcast. I enjoy podcasting. But that life balance has always kind of led me to not guesting on there. And it's just another one of those signs that the life balance is not right for me at the moment. So over the last few week off breaks that I've taken over the last year, year or so, it started to become apparent to me that I need to make this change. And this is something that I've talked to SP offline. Again, our relationship's great. We regularly support each other. So we've had some conversations offline. And and I find myself in a in a pickle. I like better podcasting. I like the Gunna Geek show. I like to occasionally, very occasionally, guest on some podcasts. So for me, this breaks all about the exploration, trying to figure out how podcasting will fit into my life and what changes might need to happen to make that happen. And also try some other random things that I've kind of had around for a little while that I've talked to SP, even my co-host Chris Farrell, about maybe seeing if that helps alleviate some of the want and the passion that I have out of certain podcasting endeavors. I could go on a lot longer about my reasons, but I won't continue to bore you on this episode. Instead, I'll just bore you if you come listen to the next Better Podcasting live chat, which will stream on Tuesday, September 21st and release on Sunday, September 26th evening, because we will happily discuss this a little bit more over on that episode, because that'll be the last one before we take a bit of hiatus over there. And if you want to drop by while we're recording and and if we feel comfortable with your question, we'll, we'll answer some questions on this. Feel free to ask us. Uh, we will take our own advice and there might be some things that we, we don't answer, but we'd love to have you come over and chat with us over there. Here's the brass tacks though. As it stands, we're planning on taking a break until early 2022 with not specific dates that we're going to say right now. Right, SB? Yeah, this is the general target openness we mentioned in the segment so far. We do plan on coming back. It, it, it's almost a for certain thing for a better podcasting, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But it is going to be at least 2022, and we'll get into more of those specifics over in the Better Podcasting live chat next week. With that said, we would encourage you to keep your eyes on our Discord server, our social media accounts, and our RSS feed where you're probably listening to this podcast from for updates as those are where we'll largely update you because in December we plan to release an update for you on some capacity give you an idea of where we stand. And if all things go well, there might be an element of certain annual tradition of ours at the year end, but we are not making any promises on that right now. Uh, we just mentioned this now because we're pretty sure a few listeners, i.e. Johnny Pennington for one, is like emailing us right now about those episodes. So the bottom line, our intention as it stands is to come back in early 2022, but we do want to be honest and transparent. There will likely be some changes to the show. We plan to keep the spirit of the show and keep the familiarity of the show, but those are the things that the hiatus are going to allow us to look at and consider with a clear mind. And before we get into our download, we want to take our own advice right now and recognize that while this hiatus is the right decision for us as hobbyists and feels right for us to be able to maintain our fun in our hobby, we want to acknowledge the impact on you, our listeners. We know that many of you have fit better podcasting into your routine, some for many, many years and some for a short while. We appreciate everyone entirely, and we recognize that might leave you with a void in your listening habits. We also know that some of you may not come back after the hiatus, and we just mentioned that in the segment. We do hope that you will come back after our hiatus, but if you don't, we wanted to thank you for listening to our show over the past six years. We sincerely appreciate everyone who has listened and also those who will come back after we return. So thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to you listening to this right now. We look forward to seeing you when we return. This is the Better Podcasting Download. All right, if you've listened to us for a while, you know that one of our go-to recommendations for someone who is looking for a consumer-level combination video and audio editor or just 
something that could work for audio editing that's more advanced than Audacity, you probably heard us recommend the Vegas Movie Studio product. Although, technically speaking, Vegas wasn't in the name, but that's kind of what people called it was the Vegas Movie Studio product. Vegas is a line of software that originally was owned by Sony and featured two levels, Vegas Pro and Vegas Movie Studio. Again, not technically with Vegas in there. And years ago, Sony sold it to a company called Magix. Now, Vegas, the Vegas suite, both of those, is an amazing, powerful software for what it is, especially when you look at the audio track portions of it. There are parts of that audio editing in there that resembles DAWs to the likes of Adobe Audition, including things like adding VST files per track. I'm, I'm not talking out of my you-know-what here because I went from using Adobe Audition in a subscription basis to switching entirely over to using Vegas and the workflow was not much different. And the consumer version, Movie Studio, retained a lot of these advanced features in Vegas Pro and up until last year was our day-to-day -day editor that we used because it was basically, the Movie Studio was the same sort of product as Vegas Pro, just stripped down in features. Heck, I even did some really, really complicated video things in the consumer version, Movie Studio Pro, including years back, we did this crazy Gonna Geek show Christmas special that had a bunch of green screening in it and had video footage of me in bed next to people who don't even live near next to me because they were in green screening, a whole bunch of random things. And there was a lot of tracks involved with this project. And Movie Studio did it great at a consumer price point. But the problem is that there's been some confusion with some of the listeners and viewers over the years because we have regular, regularly recommended Vegas Movie Studio made by Magix, M-A-G-I-X. But Magix, before they bought Vegas, had their own video editor called Magix Movie Edit Pro. So Magic's Movie Edit Pro, Magic's Vegas Movie Studio, which technically doesn't have Vegas in it. You can see where the confusion comes in. So we personally would always try to steer people to the right product, Magic's Movie Studio, because technically Vegas wasn't part of the name, but uh, it was part of that Vegas line that had all of those great features. And when we tried Magic's Movie Edit, wasn't as robust, had some problems that just didn't seem like it would be right to recommend to podcasters who also did video. So we would just recommend Movie Studio. But that's no more. We can't do that because we just noticed that a couple of months ago, Magix overhauled what is Movie Studio, which they're clearly calling Movie Studio, making sure there's no association with the word Vegas anymore, even though it's technically hosted on the Vegas domain. But the Movie Studio product has been completely overhauled to be a new product that is built off of that Magic's Movie Edit. Here's what they posted. Vegas Creative Software has decided to discontinue the development of Vegas Movie Studio to focus on Vegas Pro, our professional line of video editing products. We value our Vegas Movie Studio community and want to continue to offer you great editing tools aimed at the consumer user to continue to provide you with cutting edge consumer tools. Magix, our parent company, is now offering Movie Studio 18 based on the award-winning Movie Edit Pro product line. To help users with the transition, Magix has provided tutorials to assist you, end quote. That's the disclaimer that you see when you go to the Movie Studio section. So while we have not tried this product, because it's a completely different product, we can't recommend Movie Studio anymore. It's just a different product altogether. Based on our previous experience with Magic's Movie Edit Pro, it just seems like we can't even recommend that one either. So hopefully we'll be able to better advise on these in the future if we do end up having a chance to try these. Keep an eye on our Discord while we're on our hiatus. If we have a chance to try these, we'll mention them. But since Movie Studio was a go-to recommendation for us, we wanted to make sure very clear right now that we are not recommending Movie Studio anymore because it's a different product. Now, there is a little hope there if you're trying to buy it is that Magix, the company, sometimes involve, is involved with the Humble Bundle fundraisers. And when they've done this, they've usually offered previous year software, including Movie Studio Pro. So 
maybe, or Magic's movie studio. Uh, so maybe they will do a humble bundle this year or something that has the previous version, version 17, that was based on the Vegas platform. So keep your eyes on that if you're really trying to, but just know that if you do that, there's no real consumer level upgrade path. Now, SB, with that said, we did notice that they're offering a little bit of a upgrade path for people who want to go into the more professional line, right? Yeah, the price tag is more than Movie Studio was. However, before you had to own a prior copy of Vegas Pro to get the Vegas Pro upgrade price. So at least it's an option if you like what Movie Studio was, but want the latest in the Vegas Pro line. They're offering that discount upgrade. So this is what they said, Vegas Movie Studio users, you can now upgrade to Vegas Edit Pro or Post and continue working with the familiar UI and workflow. It's loaded with more power, fresh features, and the latest updates to take your production to the next level. Now, on the note of Vegas Pro, it does appear that they're making some changes. Vegas products pretty much always went through an annual version change under the Magix banner, but they announced they're stopping that. They said that they won't be increasing major versions regularly and will instead be focusing on several updates throughout the year with the existing versions. The bottom line, lots of changes in the Vegas line of products. We both did buy a discounted Vegas 18 Pro offer upgrade last year. I chose the Pro Edit offer upgrade last year. So we moved on over to that. So we'll likely keep using that for now unless we find something else we like better. And I will say that the Vegas Pro Edit version that I am using is phenomenal. I really enjoy using it. And from everything I've seen in other video editing softwares with DAWs, like I, I watch a lot of YouTube sailing videos, for instance, and they talk about their editing process from time to time. It's very similar to uh, everything out there. So I have enjoyed it. And for now, I can recommend it. It's going to be a little bit more pricier for you, but it is chock full of features. I really like it, especially the VST plugins that you can put in there. It's just awesome. So there's a lot of changes there, and we just wanted to make sure we were very clear that, hey, we recommended this for a long time, but it's a different product now. If you've used either of these, we'd love to have you in our Discord server. Come talk to us. You can come to betterpodcasting.com slash Discord. I personally have to say, I, I do not like what they did with this. I don't like that they took an existing product and changed it and just did a version upgrade number, like a number upgrade. I think that that's not, I personally don't think it's very honest for people who are so used to the annual upgrade path. I think there's probably quite a few people who bought it and went, wait a minute, what is this? This is not it. So I, I personally don't think that that was the best decision that they could have made. Yeah, I would hate to expect a certain UI and then totally get another UI based on an entirely different line. It'd be like going from Hindenburg to Adobe, basically, or, or vice versa. It'd be like, what is this? This is not how I'm used to editing. With and different features, too. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't understand what's going on. So I, I, I'm glad that they're trying to differentiate, and I feel really sorry for anybody that's upgraded and has been, I, I guess, duped is the best thing to say there, or they didn't read the fine print or whatever, but they shouldn't have to. I agree. They should have called it just a completely new line, and they didn't. So come to our Discord server at betterpodcasting.com slash Discord. This is where we here at Better Podcasting turn the show over to you as we run through some of your feedback. We call this segment Better Pod Back. Randy Walker was busy in our Discord this past week, and I liked what he had to say. He goes, ooh. I think that's exactly how he said it, too. Ooh. Look at what I just bought, to which he posted a picture of a Zoom P4. So he posted a picture of that. And then he ended up saying a couple of follow-ups. This was fun to watch as they were coming in. He goes, I can't believe Zoom doesn't put any accessories in the box. A USB cable would cost them, what, five cents? To which, in between, I did post a link to our unboxing and pointed out he, he could have seen that. And he, he said he, he didn't know it wasn't in there, but he still couldn't believe that they would do that. And then he also said, I could swear I've seen promo shots of this thing on a tripod slash stand. And then Damien said, that's because it looks better in a video on a stand, not because they supply one. 
And then Randy said, maybe I'm misremembering or weird angles or something. And the reason for this was because there was there was no spot to mount a stand on there. So like, there's no tripod thread or anything. And he was remembering this. So I came in and I go, so am, am I just forgetting these promo pictures? I did a quick Google and don't see anything. But obviously, if you're all thinking it's there, I'm wrong because I genuinely don't remember anything like that. And Randy responded, goes, I, I looked and couldn't find any. And then he said, at Damien, the DM and I are having shared hallucinations or, or maybe misremembering. So my thoughts is, is this a Mandela effect? Are they just, they both are sharing the same misplaced thoughts. I, I, I looked and looked and looked and I don't see anything. I don't remember anything. So I, I tend to think maybe we're confusing with another piece of hardware or, you know, just there was a video where we thought it was. I don't know. I don't see anything. He doesn't see anything, but maybe. Might not have been from Zoom. It might have been from one of the many reviewers that had it that put it on some sort of an angled stand so that they could better talk about it, that sort of thing. But I checked. There is no mounting screw on no. the back of my P4. And there is actually an out here because if you either have a 3D printer or if you know somebody that does, Randy Walker also posted in the Discord channel that... Somebody is going to print me one of these. He linked a Thingiverse uh, 3D CAD model, and it is literally a stand to hold the P4 up at an angle. Now, there's pluses and minuses to have the P4 up at an angle because of the XLR cables that go into the top. Mm -hmm. The XLR cables do weigh a lot uh, in relation to the entire device, so they might hold down on the device over time. I don't know. It's just something to look at. And also, if it is flat on the surface, then you have the XLR cables that are just coming in flat into there. It's more streamlined, in my opinion, rather than just this wave of waterfall of cables that is coming up and down. Uh, even if you get the right angled XLR cables, you're still going to have some sort of uh, ramp that comes down on the other side if you do have them. That said, I do like the fact that you can lift it up, have it in front of you, especially with those sound pad buttons on there. You can press them and it's kind of like a mini stream deck in front of you. I, it's saying <laughs> it's like a stream deck is, is a step way too far, right? But at least it's a, you can operate the things a little bit better rather than looking up and over at it, especially if you're on camera like we are with our shows. Not everybody is, but hey, it's if six of one of one way, Half a dozen of the other really doesn't matter to me, but uh, I want to say thank you to Randy Walker for yeah. bringing all that up in our Discord. I did talk a lot about the P4 in the last episode, uh, episode 39 of Better Podcasting Live Chat. So you can come to our Discord channel. I'll, I'll talk all about it, or you can look up that episode of Live Chat and listen to it. Uh, today, we also had, today we're recording this on September 14th. We had Damien the DM say, got an email, RX9 is on the way. Uh, yes, that's because they did start to post promos for it. So I think it's coming out soon. Uh, had a bit of chat back and forth on that. I think I'm still on RX7. I, yes, R, I use RX5 and 7, believe it or not, because mm. there's aspects of both that I like, but I probably should upgrade at some point. There, on Twitter, we had a tweet from the Better Pod Twitter account and said, on a scale of one to 10, how important is your podcast to you? We had Charles Current respond saying, I would say my podcast currently ranks 8 out of 10. My wife and kids are 10. The things needed to support them are a 9, like the day job, the house, etc. The podcast is the first thing I think of and work on after those. And uh, I got to say, I like the way you think, Charles. If I was going to answer it, it would have been really close to that. Either that or I would have ranked everything above 10 like I normally do. But yeah, I would have thrown podcasting below family. That's for sure. As a hobby podcaster, you're going to have to do that. We D had Depending on, you know, how much they've made you angry that day. Yeah, right. <laughs> we had at Jukebox Ginger, who is the Star Drum B podcast reply 7.3 out of 10 very specific would like to know the rationale behind that <laughs> so that was a couple of the responses that i had we had so if you have your own response we would like to love to see it on our twitter account also we asked if you use a hardware recorder to capture your audio podcast which one do you use 
And we had at Right Reasons Pod, which is podcasting for the right reasons, said Zoom N4, if that's what you mean by hardware recorder. Now, was that a typo or is there a Zoom N4? And to my knowledge, there's not an M4. Okay. I would say that it would be an H4. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Or was it a P4? No, that's a little far on the keyboard. No, H4. Uh, also, we had at Megan Wilson underscore, which is spelled M A E G A M said, I used the Rodecaster Pro. It was more useful when there were two of us in the room, but it's still useful when doing podcasts with one other host on the USB line. Jeremy Dennis at Yakko Doctor said, Zoom H6, but we just use it as backup. So he's talked about that before and how I said my podcast story. So I'm glad he's still using the H6. I'm actually recording the podcast right now on an H6. At GR Chingas said, I use two different ones, a Rodecaster Pro for when I need to record a phone call and a Premix 3, Sound Devices Premix 3 Gen 1 for when I'm recording solo. I also use a UA Apollo Twin X. Oh my gosh, (laughs) the Apollo line. But I don't like that I need to record in a DAW, which might trigger the computer's fan. So I'm avoiding to use it lately. Yeah, the purpose of the tweet was to say a hardware recorder, not necessarily a device like an audio interface, which would record into a DAW. So I did like how he qualified it there. At Brock Cook OT down in Australia said, Podtrack before, Best Buy, if hit, I've ever bought, so convenient. Yes, Brock, I, after using it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so cool. Now, there are detriments to it. Could I use it in the studio? Probably not because I, couldn't drive my equipment the way that I, I like, well, I could, but it'd be, uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I will adapt everything to it, but yeah, pod track before it's an amazing device. I wish it would have been available 10 years ago. It, it would, it, it would dominate the market right now if it had been available 10 years ago. 100%. Uh, I I'm looking forward to actually during our hiatus, finally digging that out and, and giving it a try and and using and, it, yeah. You know, I, I know you and I have commented offline a little bit. We'll let the listeners in on that. How I could take the Rodecaster Pro and go to like the living room and do a little fake podcast with kids or whatever. But I mean, why would I do that now? I have grabbed the P4. Especially since you can do a lot in post, like uh, the the effects that you might yeah. use on the Rodecaster Pro or using your DBX 286 or, or whatever. Yeah, that you can do most of that in post and just record, especially with with uh, an interview or with kids, a quick setup, whatever, the pot track before. Oh my gosh, such an amazing device. I really, really enjoy it. So that's going to take us towards the end of the show. Before we go, I do just want to, again, express thanks to everybody that has listened and who will come back after as well. And even those of you who might not come back, we do appreciate all of your listening. want to thank everybody in the live chats who come on by because we do have a live chat room. And even before we did the Better Podcasting live chat, we had a lot of people coming and chatting in the chat room. So thank you to everybody on that. And I am looking forward to taking this and and figuring things out and um, coming back and figuring how that all works with my wonderful co-host here, SP. I do want to mention that we do plan to still produce some content on occasional. Um, That's the hope. Um, Not with the speed, but like, for example, the P4. Maybe there's a video I want to do, but like, there's, there's no timeline. There's no, I am doing this. It's like, hey, maybe it's a Friday night and I want to dig out that P4 and do a little demo on it, right? Like that's the sort of thing. So just because we're taking a hiatus on this doesn't mean that you won't see some things possibly come out along the way on the YouTubes or, or elsewhere, but we're not making promises either. So I just wanted to mention that, but come to our live chat on Tuesday, the 21st of September, if you'd like to ask us a little bit more. And I also want to say, if you're looking to for something to listen to, go over to the guineageek.com network. There are still shows that are in production. For example, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., my podcast on the Marvel Universe, will still be there. There's tons of other shows. Damien, one of the frequent contributors to the podcast, he is starting up his production again post-COVID. So you can go listen to his show, Aurelia Pod, which has been a perennial joke on this podcast. A really uh, pod. pod.
and everything else, uh, you can go find that at the guinea geek.com networks. And, uh, we partly endorse all the podcasts that are available over there for sure. So for episode number 259 of better podcasting, I'm Stephen John Drew saying, Hey, if you combine this with the better podcasting live chat and consider the bonus episodes, this was 300. MSP saying it's been a fun 300 episodes. I can't wait for 302 after the hiatus. And we look forward to seeing you there. Bye. It was SP that did the math. Full disclosure. Bye. Thanks for checking out another episode of Better Podcasting. You can find the full back catalog of Better Podcasting at betterpodcasting.com. If you're into geeky podcasts, please check out the other podcasts on the Gunna Geek Network at gunnageeknetwork.com. This show was produced and edited by Stephen John Drew of Gunna Geek Productions. Voice work was done by L.W. Salinas. Thanks again for listening or watching, and we hope to see you again next week.